This is the same thing they got Lucifer. Come on, I'm not off base. This is the same thing they got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. This is the same thing they got Lucifer in trouble. The same thing kicked them out was his pride. Same thing, they got David in trouble was his pride. So I got to resist idleness, got to resist laziness, resist fixation, resist here being, resist the temptation of being desensitized. And I got the last letter, and I'm done, resist rationalization. Now I'm, ration, I'm rationalizing this thing. I'm, what, what type of, what kind of rationale David had to have to make this right? Because now, he already knew this was somebody's daughter. He already knew this was somebody's wife. But in his mind, he began to rationalize it. And we do the same thing. We'll say, I'm lonely. I don't want to be by myself. I work hard. I deserve to be happy. I deserve this and I deserve that. We, we like rationalizing things and we, and we bring God's standard down to fit our situation. We bring ourselves down and we, we bring God down to us rather and we try to rationalize. Well, this isn't, this isn't a lust thing. This is love. The Lord know my heart. God understands. God is the one that did. No, you cannot rationalize. What kind of rationale David had to say? He said, I hear what y'all say. I know that's your right wife. I know that's somebody's daughter. Go bring it to me. He still rationalizes it. But this is not a beat you down kind of message. This is more so a, a message to kind of get your attention. Get our attention rather. Our attention. The way we can be able to know that where we are in our lives Man, it's a war. This is World War on me. It's had nothing to do with COVID only, with our president only, racial tension only. But there's a war in me. No matter what goes on on the outside, there's something that I need to do. My last verse, the verse I started with, verse 27 says that he ended up, you know the story, with Uriah. Uriah came home. He sent for Uriah. He wanted Uriah to go in. Take it off for a second. He wanted Uriah to go in to his wife. Uriah said, no, I can't go in into my wife and my men out there fighting. Here, Uriah was more honorable than David. Try to get Uriah drunk to go in because now David knows that she's pregnant. Uriah still didn't go. So he sends a note to Uriah, to Joab, and says, put him on the front lines and have him killed. And so he's still rational. He's still trying to cover this thing up. Verse 27, now Uriah is dead. And when the morning is over, David sent and brought her to his house being Bathsheba and she became his wife and bore him a son look at this but the thing that David had done displeased the Lord he was pleased he covered it up no one saw it no one knew about it so he thought the thing that he done displeased the Lord so I'm gonna give you these things and I'm done give you these what we need to do to be able not to lose the war to World War me. You can play something for me. I have to, you want to win the war? Who wants to win the war? Who wants to win the war against themselves? I know I do. Anybody other than me want to win the war? I want to win the war. Let me give you these things. First one, I got to be consistent when it comes to prayer. Jews say, build myself up in my most holy faith with praying in the Holy Spirit. I got to, I got to be consistent in prayer. Give me the second thing. I must be consistent in my attempt to memorize the word of God. I got a scripture memory means something, you all. Because when you're being tempted, when Jesus was tempted himself in Luke chapter 4, the enemy came, the enemy came, the enemy came. What did Jesus say? It is written. When you can pull the word out in times of temptation, it makes all the difference in the world. You still have to withstand. You still got to submit to God and resist the devil. And then he'll flee. But scripture memorization means so much. Number three. I must be consistent. Somebody say consistent. Somebody say it like you want to like win the war. Not, not like you're waving your white flag. Say consistent. Must be consistent in my pursuit of training my mind. I got the, Paul said like this, I got to be not conformed to this world. I'll be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I got to train my mind. My mind naturally just wants to do what it does. I, my, my mind naturally says, man, I'm a man and I should, be able to, I should be able to sow my wild oats. I should be able to enjoy myself. I should be able to do what I need to do. I got, to, I got to be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Let me see the next one. I must be consistent in being accountable. Somebody in your life got to be able to hold you accountable. Somebody in your life need to say, that don't need to be your friend. Somebody in your life needs to say, you don't need to post that. Somebody in your life needs to say, I'll, I'll, you better watch him. You better watch her. Oh, you've put yourself in such a way to where nobody can tell you anything. You're a man like everybody else. 
Everybody make mistakes. Go ahead on. We'll see you later at the bottom. You got to put somebody in your life to hold you accountable. God knows I have people that hold me accountable. God knows people check my motive and check my intention and keep, keep my feet to the fire. But, but we get to the point where we don't like nobody telling us anything. Let me see the next one. I must be consistent in creating and maintaining hedges. Come on, as a married man, can I speak as a married man? I don't get to have female friends. God, I thought, I said, it's a Christian church full of married people. And I thought, somebody was going to. I don't get to have female friends because I like women. I'm a man. I like beautiful women. That's why I married a beautiful woman. I don't go help me. I didn't, I didn't marry her spirit. I didn't see her spirit first. I asked her, is there any more room? And no jeans. That's what I asked her. I didn't ask her where she go to church. <laughs> but my point is, <laughs> I create hedges. And I'm not perfect, but I create hedges. And if you want to have a halfway decent track record, you got to create some hedges. You can't be friends and and it's just 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 chopping it up with the opposite sex. Just pour. I don't get to pour my heart out to females. I don't get to pour my heart out to say, "Oh, lady, see, not doing this," and "Oh, lady, see, not doing that." I don't get to do that because that opens up a door. Oh, I'm trying to talk to somebody in here. Come on, I'm trying to talk to some ladies in here. Ladies, you don't get to pour your heart out to these fellas at the job and they they just there. They just oh, they so sweet and they so nice and they just listen to everything I say. He's setting you up. In the back of his mind, it can start out good. You my little sister, my little cousin. I wish I could tell you how many. I can't tell you that. Y'all ain't going to come back next Sunday. How many little cousins? That's just my friend. That's my God sister. <laughs> He's setting you up. Just to, just to draw you in. You got to protect. You got to put some hedges. Y'all don't like me. They, gonna, they, gonna, they ain't coming back. Look, look at this next one here. But I'm just preaching the word. We can't, we can't hoop and holler every week. I must, I must be consistent and honest with myself and with God. That's the last one. I got to be consistent and honest with myself and God. You got to be honest with yourself. You got to be, con- you got to be consistently honest and say, God, God, I'm vulnerable right now. God, I'm, God, I'm weak right now. God, you know my heart's desire. God, you know what I want. God, you know what I'm looking for. God, I, I got to be honest with God. God, you put this drive in me. God, you put this. This, this, this is pushing me. God, help me. Help me to bring my, my flesh under subjection. Help me to be like the Apostle Paul that said, I bring my body under subjection. Lest after I preach to others, I myself will be a castaway. I got to be honest. I got to be honest with myself. On behalf of everyone here at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for being a part of our online worship experience. Thank you for your participation through your likes, your shares, and your comments. But we also want you to participate when it comes down to helping us continue to push this gospel message forward. You can do so by downloading our app, and you can give there in a safe and secure way. You can go to our website at truthandlove.tv, and you can give. Or you can text the word T-I-L Jax to the number 77977. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thanks for watching. Be blessed. See you next time.